30 years ago today, October 17th, 1989, is a date that many of us still use as a primary mile marker of life. The Loma Prieta earthquake caused widespread devastation across Northern California, most notably resulting in almost 70 deaths and 4,000 injuries. The magnitude 6.9 tremor was centered 10 miles north of Santa Cruz, and while the shaking only lasted about 15 seconds, the damage was estimated at up to $7 billion. Here's five things you may not have known about this day 30 years ago. 911. Yeah, this is an emergency in San Francisco. What happened? Uh, there's a hell of an earthquake and we've got uh, windows and everything has fallen out. Number one, everyone remembers exactly where they were at precisely 5.04 p.m. And while some lost their lives, one man literally clung to his while climbing one of those light towers at Candlestick Park. You see, decorative banners were placed on those towers to help celebrate the World Series. But ahead of Game 3, some of them got tangled in the wind. And right around 5 p.m., it was this man, Benji Young's job, to go climb up those towers and fix everything before first pitch. Little did he know that the tremendous swaying would have him holding on for dear life, with his safety belt actually mistakenly disconnected as he was suspended about 225 feet in the air. Oh my God, we're having an earthquake. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Can you feel that? Number two, the Loma Prieta earthquake was actually predicted on record with a chilling degree of accuracy. The late Jim Birkeland was a geologist who used unconventional and somewhat controversial methods to predict seismic activity, including observations of unusual animal behavior, atypical geyser and hot spring activity, moon and tide information, and magnetic fluctuations. On October 13, 1989, published in the Gilroy Dispatch, Birkeland correctly predicted seismic activity between a magnitude of 3.5 and 6 would occur in the Bay Area between October 14th and the 21st. Now, while Birkeland did miss on several other predictions in his life and was commonly criticized for promoting fear, he actually claimed a 75% rate of accuracy in his methods. Said, uh, the upper deck collapsed into lower deck. From westbound into eastbound, east of TI. Number three, initial rumors had speculated that the Bay Bridge fell completely into the water and that San Francisco's entire marina district was burning down. As it turns out, only one portion of the bridge had collapsed on itself, taking about a month to repair and about 60 structures in the marina were totaled beyond repair. Remember, life was a little more technologically primitive back then. No cell phones, no internet, everything was extremely word of mouth. This was in a time where television and radio were truly the only forms of mass communication. And while some broadcasts were knocked off the air completely for hours, many more people received no further information for days due to a lack of power at their homes. Central emergency. Cypress section of the West Grand Freeway has come down. The cypress structure has collapsed. We have 238. We have a major injury accident. Number four, two main transportation arteries no longer exist due to the Loma Prieta quake, including Oakland's cypress structure and the Embarcadero Skyway of San Francisco. The aftermath footage of Interstate 880 in Oakland is chilling as the double-decker freeway had pancaked on itself, trapping hundreds and killing 42. It would take almost a dozen years to demolish what remained and rebuild the roadway as we currently know it, reconnecting downtown Oakland to the Bay Bridge. As for San Francisco, have you ever wondered why no main highway directly links the Bay Bridge and the Golden Gate? Well, that was the job of the Embarcadero Freeway, State Route 480, which, as you can see here, was a vital artery through the city. But due to quake damage, structural concerns, and even regret of its initial appearance, the entire route was removed in 1991, less than 25 years after it opened, leaving the shoreline how it looks today. They have people trapped on Cypress. They want you to respond to Cypress and work your way towards West Grand Avenue. They have people trapped all along. And number five, while these vivid memories are what stick with us, the lessons and improvements 
resulting from October 17, 1989, might impact us most in the long run. An estimated 27,000 buildings suffered some kind of damage in the quake, and that prompted the immediate push to retrofit existing structures, as well as implement better building code for new structures. We also use advancements in science and technology to better understand the land, the soil, and geologic vulnerabilities like never before. The hope is to replicate the dramatic preventative steps taken between the 1906 quake and the 1989 quake to further minimize damage and obviously the loss of life. And although we won't ever know when the next one is coming, the worst thing we could do is forget about the last one.